All right. Well, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, little trees and um, Michael's has a, um, a classic Christmas or traditional Christmas uh, nutcracker theme. So these trees would go really cute with that decor. All right. I'm going to slide these guys over. And if you want to go to overhead, I'll show you guys what um, what I found at Michael's to make this craft today. So this is our 12 by 18 by one inch uh, white foam sheet, craft foam sheet. Um, so you'll just love these trees out of uh, one sheet. You'll need some poster board, to um, to cut out. Hey, Dombi. Um, it's Lindsay. Uh, it seems like your mic is cutting in and out. All right. So, um, so I'm Dombi from Floorcraft, and I'm not even sure that I even said that at the beginning. <laughs> We also have Tony on chat. She's going to um, answer any questions that you guys have, and we'll do our best to, to get them answered for you. So um, we'll start over because we um, were cutting out. So this is the little tree that I'm going to show you how to make today, a little foam tree. And this is our 12 by 18 by one inch uh, craft foam sheet. This one sheet, I, I believe, will do all seven of these trees if you lay out your patterns right. So you'll need some kind of paper. This is um, heavy cardstock just because it's nicer to as a guide for your uh, clean cut cutter. So some kind of a heavy cut cardstock or poster board, uh, pencil and scissors. You will need a two and a half inch ball. These come, I believe, in a six pack at Michael's. So you can get all of the trees out of one pack, six pack of balls. Uh, you're gonna need a seven eighths inch, seven eight, three quarter inch dowel. And then um, around the little base, just for decoration, I glued these little um, wooden beads. These are bead landing beads, and they're probably, I'd say 10 and 12 uh, millimeter are the ones that I use. And then I have some fabrics. That red belt. I'm sorry, out of that bag right there. Um, these are two of the fabrics right there at um, that Michaels has that I picked for these and then also um, I use just plain red felt for one of the trees. So I just bought a sh these sheets of um, these are just the nine by 12 um, sheets of red felt. And to decorate the trees, I put a little bow at the top, and then this is to trim around the um, outside edges and inside the little cutout. And to make bows, this is a this is seven eighths inch red. It, this happens to be satin. Um, it could be anything, any color really. And then this is um, a three eighths inch that I just made the little the little bow at the top with. And then some kind of cording. This happens to be elastic cording. Um, it can be anything really. Thread, um, uh, embroidery floss, anything that you can get through the top of these little jingle bells. And then I found these three sizes of jingle bells. Um, I just like the various sizes together. You don't really have to. You could use all one size, but 
Um, the ones I have here are 25 millimeter, 18 millimeter, and nine millimeter are some of the sizes that I use. And you're gonna need some paint, gold paint and a paint brush for um, decorating the, the base. And glitter to glitter up the base. This is, this is that extra fine uh, gold glitter. And then just to put a little bit of greenery um, on the trees, I found this little, um, looks like maybe a Dusty Miller. Uh, could be anything, could be a uh, frosted branch, could be just, um, just anything really will work. And then this um, is in their everyday florals, but I mean, right now you could probably find some really cute little Christmas picks that would work just fine. All right, cut the ball in half. You're gonna need a steak knife, sharp steak knife. Uh, this is my favorite tool. This is a, a keyhole saw, but you'll have to find that at like a hardware store. But a steak knife will work just fine for this. Some kind of saw, wood saw, anything. Red knife. We're just gonna cut this in half. First. And next, we are going to glue all the little beads around the base. So we can get this painted and um, get it drying while we put the fabric on. So where do we have colors from today, Tony? We just have one from Virginia. Um, I mean, we've got lots of people on the line, but that's the only person that's commented. So oh. maybe if yeah. people want to share in the chat where you're joining us from, if you're crafting along with or just watching, that would be great. Yeah. And don't forget that we want to see your crafts. You can leave them our hashtags so they know where to show us pictures when they're done. Yes, well, please you know. hashtag Flora Craft and share your creations. It looks like we have people from Florida, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Colorado, Massachusetts, Cape Cod. I have been there. Nice. So oh, yeah, we're just taking, I think these are like the 12 millimeter, the bigger ones out of the pack. Just put a little glue, a little dab of glue on one side and pop it on. Now you can thread these first and, and, and um, make a little ring of them and then glue the little ring on if you want, but um, you don't really need to. You can just glue them one by one, whatever you think is quicker. Well, I was just at Michael's yesterday and there uh, Willie was saying that he saw a lot of the nutcrackers out and about too. Their nutcrackers are so cool. They would look so cool standing with these trees. So one by one. And then two, the class is being recorded. I think she mentioned earlier and we can wait 24 to 48 hours. They'll put it up on their YouTube, YouTube channel. All right, so that's all the way around. One row of beads. One. Get these out of the way so they're not all in our way while we're trying to finish. <laughs> it's easier said than done. <laughs> all 
All right, and then you're gonna need to take your dowel and I cut off a piece about three and a half inches. So I cut all my stems or tree trunks all the same height. And that was just to get the bottoms of the trees up so that I could put greenery in there and it wouldn't cover up the trees. So um, if you wanna vary your stem heights to the size of your tree, you can do that too. But for these um, in the photo are uh, three and a half inches is what I cut the stem to. I use just a wood saw to, to cut the dowel. They cut pretty easy. It's a soft pine. So you should be able to get them cut pretty easy. So first thing I do is center the dowel in the top of the ball and just push it in little by little. I'm going to use a little bit of muscle to get it in there. You don't have to put it all the way into the bottom. Just push it in so it's about halfway into the ball and pull that back out. You see that? I don't have the overhead in front of me. See that there? And then add glue right into that hole. And pop your dowel back in there. And let that dry and it should dry in there just a few seconds. And then you're going to want a, some kind of drop cloth, um, piece of cardboard, newspaper, something down on your surface. Sandy, do you want to share what kind of glue gun you're using? I can. It is a Craft Smart low temp gun. Um, you'll want to use a low temp gun with our foam because a lot of times those high temp guns get so hot that they will melt our foam. So you'll want a low temp. And a lot of the guns have, it's an option you can do high or low temp. So just make sure you use low. All right. This is just gold metallic paint. You can use any gold metallic acrylic paint or work. And I, um, I don't dip. I just pour. I just pour and push it around. I just find it's easier. You have to use quite a bit of, of paint with our foam because it's just a bunch of little pockets, a bunch of little bowls or cells. So I just like to pour my paint on and then it gets all down in where I need it. Quite a bit on there. I want a good solid coat because we're going to also use this paint as the glue for the glitter. And the good thing about using the same color paint as glitter is that even if the little little bit of glitter flakes off, it's still going to be gold underneath. So it's still going to hide that. You won't see the bead underneath. Do the dowel. Good. Add your glitter. Get on the little spout. Glitter away. And if you see where the paint didn't quite get good enough, then you can go back and add a little more paint. Looks like it dried faster than I wanted it to.
Is everyone making these for themselves? Are we doing gifts? These are private decorations. We're making them to sell. Quiet chat today. <laughs> That's all right. More out here. I'm gonna have to cake it on that um, dowel because the the wood is wanting to soak up the paint faster than I can get the glitter on. And that should do it. All right, and then we're gonna set that aside to dry while we put some fabric on these trees. All right. So I already cut out my template. Do we have any questions so far? No questions, quiet, quiet, quiet. We have someone creating this for a table decoration. Nice. Yeah, and I mean, you could put them all together like this I did in a garland and set them all together as a tablescape. Um, but I mean, really you could put little groups of them all over, you could use them on the mantle or by the front door or in a window because they're nice and thin so they'd almost even sit in a window all right so to cut out the outside um it's quicker to just use a knife again this is a steak knife and then and it'll work just fine so you're just going to use that paper as a guide and just template honey um so they're all different sizes but for me uh to do a a triangle all i do is i measure how wide i want the bottom of the triangle to be and how tall i want the triangle to be and then i make a rectangle that's that wide and that tall and then you just find the center of the top of the rectangle and you make your diagonal lines down. It's just my, it's the easiest way to make sure that they're not off kilter one way or another. So make a rectangle that's as wide and as tall and then cut your triangle out of the center of it. Does that make sense? All right. Now to cut out this inside, you very easily could use a steak knife, but because this is cut such a cool tool, I have to show you. This is our clean cut um, foam cutter and it heats up to like really hot. So yes, it will burn you. Um, so you, you don't want to touch anything up here, but this collar, uh, this black collar, turns so the whole collar spins to turn it on it takes about 15 20 seconds to heat up and then all you're going to do is i'm going to i'm just using this as a um to lift it up off the table so i don't cut into my table so you're going to poke it in and you're going to hold the knife at a 90 degree angle to the foam so that you get a nice straight clean cut and it's not a fast tool you don't want to push so hard that the blade's bending you want to just enough pressure to let it melt through and it's going to give you a nice clean edge Keep that 
right up against that paper. Hold it at that 90 degrees and just let it cut through. And the good thing about this is you don't have to, um, you don't have to come in from the side of your tree. You can cut it right out of the middle. And it cuts it really clean. Um, one thing about this is we found that some of the USB, because it's USB, um, plugs into a USB wall, wall unit, some of those wall blocks, what are they called, wall adapters, AC adapters, some of them don't um, work with this tool. And on the handle, it tells you what kind of output that you need in the wall plug. So just make sure that you're using a, if you try it and it doesn't work, try a different wall plug. There's so many of them out there today that they're just, some of them that it just doesn't like. All right, and then um, sometimes you'll get a little bit of gunk on the, on the blade after cutting. So all you really need to do like take your, like even your um, cardboard from your jingle bells and just kind of lay it in the crack of that and just wipe it off like a butter knife while it's still hot. And just wipe all that off, it cleans it right up. And then go ahead and shut it off. All right, and then save these because you could really make, um, turn these into trees also, you know, just without the little center cut out. So I would save those, paint them white and put little snow on them and use them in your snow villages or something, cover them with fabric and just make, make smaller trees with no, no tree trunk would be cute. All right, and then you're gonna use your template for your fabric. So lay your fabric down. You're going to want it to um, about, let's say, uh, like an eighth of an inch bigger than your template. And that's going to allow you to bring it over, bring it around the edge of the foam just a little bit so you don't see that edge of the foam. So all I did is I just eyeballed it. Just literally eyeballed it and drew it about an eighth of an inch bigger. I can't hardly see my pencil. It's there, but not very really good. I need a pen. Maybe you want to use a pen for this. So about an eighth of an inch bigger all the way around your tree. And in the center also. Want to wrap around that inside too. Let's go ahead and cut that out. 
And if it's a little big, it's no big deal. You can trim it as you go. And it's all gonna get covered up. The sides are all gonna get covered up with um, the ribbon anyway. So if it's a little jiggity jaggedy, it's no big deal. We're gonna cover it up. Center. And you could cover these with really anything. You could even paint them. Cover them with yarn. It'd be cute, like even covered with like a bunch of um, just glue, colorful pom poms all over. All right, and then get this guy centered on here as best you can. That's pretty good. So you can see it's just about an eighth of an inch bigger all the way around. So so. And just take your glue and go right along the bottom edge where the fabric touches. And you can almost just roll your tree right into that glue and that will pop that fabric right along that edge. Let's see, it's just right along the edge like that. You want to make sure you keep your little lines fairly straight. I go to the opposite side. Oh no. The fine side. Oh, there it is. It's all on the floor. All right, get the glue and go all along the side of this one. Roll that tree over on that glue. All right. And then in here, you'll want to snip kind of snip into the corners and that will allow you to hold the fabric up into the corner. It's a little easier up in these parts to do it from the front. So just peel back because you can't really get your gun inside there. And then you use your scissors right in the middle. So, and go all along the inside edge. And on this side. I'm getting it more on my fingers than I am on the tree. And then I'm on the bottom. And 
And then just make sure that this bottom edge doesn't come too far. Actually, I'm gonna cut about a one inch little mark right there because you're gonna need to leave a little bit of room for your stem. So I wouldn't bring till just that little one inch right in the middle, just cut the fabric right close to the edge. And then these little guys just snip off. There you have it. Pretty simple, just, just covering it up is basically what we're doing. And like I said, you could use anything to cover it with. Do strips of burlap maybe wrapped around like this and make it kind of a rustic look. Or like I said, you can paint it white and just do snow on it. All right. So I'm not gonna do both sides. So with the ribbon, same thing, we're just gonna cover So glue the edge of it right on a corner. And then add a little glue to the ribbon to secure it along the way. Something like that. What can I think about ribbon again? This is 7 8 inch ribbon. And it's like I said, it's red satin, but it can be any red ribbon. Anything you have. And use your knife or your scissors to kind of get it up inside the peak there. Snip that off. Oops. Snip it off a little too short. So then I'll just add a little piece in there. <laughs> That's what happens. All right. All right. So you have the inside all covered. Now we're gonna go around the outside edge too. Now on the bottom, I would start, so you leave that one inch little section where your dowel's gonna go. So we'll just start about an inch over, inch and a half over from center. I can leave that on. Now, if you're gonna do both sides, if you're gonna cover um, fabric, like these are all done on both sides because it's a centerpiece. If you're going to do both sides, you'll want to put um, both sides of fabric on before you put your ribbon on because this is covering up all the ends. Now I'm putting a little thing of to glue down one both edges kind of that keeps it kind of flat All right. 
Shake and shake. And then leaving that little bit open for the stem. And now uh, Floracraft foam is now made with recycled materials. So how cool is that? All right, guys. So to decorate, well, I did, well, you know what? Let's do the little, let's do the little, Jingle bells first. So I just grabbed three sizes. Or three different sizes, three of the same size. It's all up to you, whatever. And I just literally tied the little string each single bell. And these could be, I mean, you could use the little wooden beads that are that you because that's a great big bag. You could use those little wooden beads and paint them gold and glitter them and they would kind of match your stem or your tree trunk. So that would be one option. You didn't want to do bells. So then I just figured out about how high I wanted it to hang and then added a inch or two to tie them together. Pom pom. You could do little, um, I don't know, any ideas? Something. Any mistletoe, ooh. And then I just laid these about where I want them to hang together. I figure about right here. I'll just that one at the same length after you get it where you want it. And we'll knot these all together at the end. And this little guy. This one's almost too little. Idea. No questions so far. Still quiet. Yeah, adding miniature Christmas tree ornaments. Nice. Yes. Good idea. Our lights. We usually we have a lights. Somebody said, put lights on it. Yes, it could be the battery operated twinkle lights. Yes, super cute. All right, so then I just grabbed them all together and just knotted them. There we go. And you're just going to tie a knot like that in the top. And if you have pins, you should have some pins because you have pins to pin your template on, right? If you take a pin or glue, you can just put a little dab of glue on there and stick it up in there and it'll stay just as nice. Um, pretty positive. You wouldn't need a pin, but to make it a little easier. I'm going to put a little bit, tiny bit of glue on the end of the pin so that when it goes in there, it stays. And you just want to put it right in the middle. And just make sure that your pin goes in straight so that it doesn't pop out the front or the back. And give it a little help. Up in there, maybe a pencil. 
There we go. Oh, that's kind of low. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. I really like that. But the idea is that they dangle, not sit on the bottom of the tree. All right. Easy fix. I won't bore the fingers. Okay. Well, better put the pin right through that knot. I'm not going to add any glue this time, but you need to add glue. Get it in there. And yes, the little eraser from the pencil. Okay, so you might need to do a double knot and then it might not come untied on you. I keep having to redo this. I'm going to have to get new strings because the whole, it's going to be way too short. All right. Time's a charm, right? All right. So anyway, there's your little jingle bells inside. We got a little cord showing, but we're going to put something there so you won't even see it. Okay. And these, I don't even use the whole piece. So they just pull off this particular one that I have. And then I just cut like these little, just little pieces to use here and there. Snip that little end off too. So you just need two little pieces like that. And then I just glued oh, a little piece of this too. So on this bigger tree, you can almost use this. <clears throat> you can you can almost use this full piece. Um, on the smaller trees, I just used little pieces of it, like cut off, like little guys like that for these baby trees just because they don't need as much. This big guy, I went ahead and used these pieces all. Cut off those little funny ends and then just add a little glue and lay it right inside. And it's a centerpiece. Well, this one doesn't have the back done, but you'll want some coming out both sides so that both sides of the table can enjoy your decorations. And this one, I just kind of angled the opposite way out the other corner. And let's get it dry. And then I added tufts of, well, again, this could be frosted pine. This, this is like some kind of a, maybe a dusty miller or some kind of that look, but absolutely anything will work. Here's a little bit of greens. And then for the top of the tree, I just made a small bow um, and I just did it like a shoestring bow. So you just make a loop, just like you're tying your shoe, bring it around and make a little bow. And 
adjust it however big you want it to be. Oops. <laughs> and then I put these little guys again. And then for the top, I just I just did like three. So there's three and three. And this one stem will go a long ways. Here. I just cut these individual little guys off here and glue them in one by one. At the top. Add a little bit up there. However you want. And then these little guys just to add some texture. You can do little berries, It'd be cute. And then I just glued this bow right to the front. Something like that. All right, and then we can add our base so that it's dry. It feels kind of dry. All right, and then when you put your base on, center it in the bottom of your foam and then support the foam real good on both front and back with your fingers and just push very gingerly until you get like a little bitty groove where that dowel is going to go and add just some glue quite a bit because you don't want it coming off of there and then put it right back in that little groove that you just pushed into the bottom of home or and just hold it real good until it's I didn't get my bells staggered very nicely. I kind of eh. All right. And the good thing about this base is adding those uh, wood beads and the wood dowel to this foam ball, it gives it a little weight. So it it's a lot less likely to tip over with that little bit of weight on the base. All right, guys. We, um, we want to go to overhead or to front view. I will put these back in front so everyone can see all the different styles. Well, why do I have to go with something like that? So that's all of them. That's what I mean by I put them all at the same level, all the bottoms at the same level. And then when you put your, um, just anything, just like some little um, greenery garland and just lay the greenery garland down through the center of the table and then pop all your, your trees in place with some lights, lights would be cute. All right, and then if we have a little bit of time, looks like we do. We have some upcoming crafts. Is it the wreath first? The 
I believe this one is up next. Um, it's just a fun, this is actually just Sherpa fabric. So I'm going to show you how to wrap it around our extruded foam ring. So this one's coming up. He's looking frantically. Lindsay's looking frantically. <laughs> so this one's coming up. So look for Floracraft um, projects in December, classes in December. We changed it to the next week. So it's like the second week of December. And then this is December 15th for the wreath. And then, oh, this one is the 15th. Oh my gosh, I have you guys so confused right now. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> They're going, what's the 15th? So this one is December 15th. So all this is, there's a little foam ball in there that you, um, that you attach everything to. You use a little bit of our diamond dust to make it glitter and super cute, super fun, super easy gift idea. And then our little wreath. That's that guys. If, um, if we don't have any further questions, I guess we'll say goodbye for now. All right, well, thank you for making it fun with Floracraft. See you next time.